What's up guys, welcome back to my weekly reflection. I know it has been a while, I've been on vacation for like two, three weeks in the beginning of August, just visiting some family in Spain. And as some of you guys know, who watch my previous videos, like I make reflection videos every week. Um, I was um, on a pretty good winning streak, I think like 14 days. As you can see here in my journal, if we start on the 9th of July last month, I basically had a crazy winning streak. You see here, winning day, winning day, winning day, winning day, winning day, another winning week, another winning week, never a losing day. And when I <laughs> went to vacation, like I think this week, like Friday here, I was so confident. I, I thought I was the best trader in the world. And so I went on vacation for two weeks. And then now last week, the first week that I came back, the 19th of August, I don't know what happened, but everything just went downhill like crazy. It's just to be ashamed of. I again started falling into my bad habits. I again overtraded, again overrisked. And I know I've been doing this for so long. I've been making the same mistakes for so long now, but I don't know why it's. I mean, I have the reasons. I, this is going to be a long video. Trust me. I have so many lessons, so many mistakes, so many trades I want to go through. Um, but yeah, man, it's just to be ashamed of. Again, I was funded with 350k um, here. So uh, this is not on challenges. This is trading on on a real funded account. So I was 1.5k up on my top sub account. The other ones were kind of break even, just um, building up slowly. It was a pretty nice equity curve. But then here, everything just went downhill. I almost blow three of my funded accounts. So I only have like one top sub funded account left. Um, and I don't know what to do, man. Um, I am 1.5k in profit on that one. So I don't know if I should request my first payout to have that first feeling of confidence that trading actually works. Um, but I don't think I deserve it after this week because this is just a terrible week. I don't know what I was doing. I was literally just trading like a, I have never seen a chart before, like literally just chasing price, doing stupid stuff, not following my own system, not trusting it not taking profits, being greedy, FOMOing. My biggest weakness, I think, is not accepting losses. I was too confident with all these winning weeks here. Whenever that first red day came, I just couldn't handle it. I just can't agree that I was wrong on that day and I want to make the money back. And I start falling into bad habits, not observing the market, but literally just chasing price, doing, not taking profits, just being greedy, being... Uh, in a FOMO state of mind, just all that stupid stuff were, that every noob is doing. Like, I don't know what happened, but um, yeah, it happened again. Um, and I'm a little bit ashamed of this, um, but I'm just gonna go over the whole week last week with you guys, um, sharing all my mistakes, all my lessons, uh, because there's a ton. I wanna, <laughs> this is gonna be a long video, I think. Um, and it, it shouldn't laugh because it's just, Ah, man, it's it's always always that steady equity curve, and then the first red day, I just, I mean, I know what the problem is now. I I know what I should do. I should just accept the loss and move on. But it's so so hard. And just for the ones that don't wanna watch my whole reflection when I go over my trades in a minute, the f main reasons, the ma my main problems right now are these so not accepting losses being too greedy not taking profits FOMO into trades and just not trusting my system those are the biggest things I believe I've written them down just before recording this this video let me see um, so accepting losses trusting my system this is the most important thing I forgot having good habits outside of trading because this whole week I had just terrible habits. I woke up too late. I had other projects going on. Just all, all the bad habits that you can imagine um, that will not lead to you being ready to observe the market and take good trades, right? So yeah, ha if you don't have good habits outside of trading, you can see here, it's the proof. Here, I had way better habits. I was waking up early. I was just being healthy, going outside, working out, maybe you go running. I was reflecting and here it just went downhill like crazy i i was yeah it's just uh it's just down bad so having good habits outside of trading also i should have no expectations whatsoever going today 
when something looks really really clear i can't always be 100 percent sure even if it looks really clean so i should have no expectation that the trade will play out because if you have expectations then you will not be a good trader you should observe the market and be a be just neutral about price action you don't expect your take profit to get hit you don't expect your 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 day to be good even if it's like the best day with a lot of news have zero expectations just trade your system follow um your trading habits and and that's it right um then the next thing is only taking dumb clear setups yeah uh, you guys are gonna laugh with me uh, if i show my trades i took the, the the most stupid trades ever and it's all in, in it's all a mental game because the, of course i'm gonna show you th these are not trades following my system you're gonna think that i'm stupid but like <laughs> these trades make no sense literally like a beginner trade of like uh chasing price it's 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 so bad but like this these things happen if you're if you if you're not mentally ready to trade so if you have bad habits if you're not following your your rules if you're over risking over trading over leveraging all that stuff um and then the biggest thing is taking profits at low hanging fruit this is lit by far the biggest thing i should take profits when the next high or low gets hit um especially if it's like two three or i have so many trades uh, that i'm gonna show you that i'm just literally not taking profits two three four r but i just wanted to go to that high like just take profits like you don't want it to go back towards break even uh, let's say even to your stop loss you don't want it like take profits like <laughs> you are up that's the biggest thing um and then yeah risk management of course um equity curve was going like crazy i don't know if i can pull up my top step as you can see here this is my only funded account that i kind of saved last week so this is the only one that i got left in nice nice profit which is not in drawdown it's my top step 50k which is currently at 1.4k um, in profit um but as you can see here these were the weeks i was talking um, um about before i went to vacation look at this steady equity curve 100 200 300 today 100 200 300 a day just really good risk management and so my, all my other accounts except this one uh, are just in like 1.5k drawdown and the max loss is like 2k uh, i'm not gonna log into them like i don't i don't need to prove that i that i'm in drawdown on account like who would do that like <laughs> i'm not sure i can request a payout right now but i'm not sure if i'm gonna do it maybe just to get that confidence that it's actually possible to make money trading um but i really want to get to two or three k so that my max loss limit stays at zero and i basically have a buffer uh, i think that's better um but yeah all my other accounts as you can see here they are just down down bad um look at this <laughs> this is just uh, this is just world world war three but yeah um i want to be transparent of course this is not a youtube channel where i'm go like oh my the top ICT strategy this is just I'm just documenting my journey. I think that's uh, that's clear. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be completely transparent, showing my thought process ab behind every trade. Um, and it's not gonna be um, a fun video, but I need to make it because like it, this reflection just needs to happen. Otherwise, I'm not learning from my trades, even though the reflection on this week was already crazy. I spent so many hours already and reflecting look at all these all these texts every single day i need to write down my thoughts because otherwise i'm not gonna this f one on friday where i fucked up is a crazy reflection uh but yeah i'm s uh, gonna go over them again um especially over my trades uh so let's start right now so on monday first of all of course again Credits to Trader Day and Justin Warline. These are my two mentors. Um, basically, learned everything from them. Um, yeah, just saying that. Now on Monday, what was the trace looking like? It's just gonna be a funny video. I mean, I, I can't laugh at this a bit. Like, I think people after watching this video will will get a confidence boost. That's my goal because this is just what you should not do. So I hope that I can just give you um value by showing my mistakes um so it's a win-win right i reflect and i give value to people what they should not do <laughs> so weird but yeah um so on monday 
um where is the market open i trade from 9 25 to like the, the the lunch hour of new york so monday i took some shorts because i saw a weekly s smt and then a daily s smt so we took out the previous day's high um but not on, on es or on ym and then here we took out the previous um high of the of the previous session um and we did not do that on ES. i'm not going to show you every smt but yeah you get the point right um, so daily, um, weekly SMT and a 90 minute SMT. And I was basically looking at shorts, but here is an example. It was a pretty hard day to read. As you can see here, it's also no news last week there on Monday. So should now expect crazy price action. But, um, here's an example of when you see these SMTs, but no displacement, no really, um, structure that is looking bearish with your bearish cracks, then you should not trust it. Um, it was a hard day to read, but basically what happened here, we formed micro SMT. So, okay, we went above. That's nice. SMTs were price moves. Then we have a stop rate. Okay, nice. I wanted to catch um, a short here. I, I, I didn't really trust it. It was above a true session open Then we displaced. And I basically want to enter right here in this fairly gap and then target the low because we were so close to it. And I thought this was going to be the market maker um, sell model. But kind of weird price action. I can't really blame the market. It's only to blame on me. But um, yeah, it's just a crazy bad stop loss. Look at this. I just want to profit some points. Should never happened, have happened. Um, and then here again, this looked better because here we had the 90 minute SMT. Um, we had another sweep right here. So this is another um, stop rate. Um, and this looked better. We have three SMTs. We are above the true session open. Um, but why did this not work? So my reflection about this day is that... Um, look at the raw price i can look at the structure look at the closest especially on the 5 50 minute time frame if you look at this right here you just neglect all of these these smts if they're not in line with the context and and structure the pr just with the raw price action then you should not trust it right it should be in line with everything and here on monday first thing what do you need to do look at the draw liquidity we are so close towards this high right we also have no SMT, I believe. So this is a, a nice draw on liquidity on the external. Um, yeah, on, on, on it's nice external liquidity, right? So um, here on Monday on, on market open, what do you see here? One, two, three, four minute, 15 candles, just closing really, really bullish. All these wicks right here. It shows that price does not want to get lower and it all happens inside discount of this range right on the 15 minute time frame we do this also below the true session open and so this is a lesson i learned from one of my people in my private discord also he says like when the market is consolidating then you should expect price to run in the last ditch macro and the last ditch macro is 10 45 to like um 11 15 and that's exactly what happened here so the market was consolidating the whole session long and then finally when 10.45 came, you can see right here, 10.45, 10.50, it's like you can say 10.45 starts the macro, 10.50, doesn't really matter, but price moved up and completed the draw liquidity objective. Uh, it started going higher from there, right? So um, biggest lesson here is just like looking at the minute 15 close right here. It was really, really bullish. We don't want to go lower. If we immediately sweep a low and then have this bullish, really bullish candle showing that order flow wants to shift, then yeah, um, should be a sign also blow the true session open. Um, and I should not, this looks like a stop rate. It's kind of tricky, um, but yeah. Um, the draw liquidity was higher. We are below the true session open. We swept this low. Um, we just enter a, a, a macro also. And the draw liquidity f here looks now a little bit cleaner. So this is lowest liquidity. Um, where is this lowest liquidity? Um, yeah, I mean, not really good day to trade. So um, no A plus setups here. So don't really pay much attention to Monday. It's all right. It just one good loss, right? 200 loss. It's all right. This is not a bad day. I didn't overtrade. Here is really where it started. Look at this Tuesday. Tuesday. What happened? 
we open the market. We tap the minute 15 fair value gap right here when we when we open the market. We don't do this on ES, S&P 500. So that's an SMT fill. Can be seen as a cracking correlation. We also have a minute five precision swing point. Okay, price moves up from there. Not really a setup. That's just too less information. No context, No, not, not enough cracks, right? But then this is the trade I missed. We have an hour four PSP. So what this means is it's an hour four candle here at the high that's up close on NQ and then down close on ES. That's a cracking correlation. You can use it as a bearish crack, bearish confluence. And then while at the market open here, 9.50, 9.56, we form daily bearish SMT. Now at the time I didn't see this. This is a markup in hindsight, but we had a daily SMT. It, we are inside a macro inside the nine. 45 macro we form a micro SMT right here and then we have a minute one SMT filled so what this means is that this one minute fair value gap on NQ got filled while on ES it didn't get filled it just never ended up filling this fair value gap so this is this is a setup but I missed it right because th why is this a setup because first of all okay we cleared all of this liquidity nice on the yes, we took out the high. Nice. Market moves from liquidity to liquidity. Now we go to sell side, most likely, right? If we have the bearish cracks, if we have bearish confluences, because market moves from liquidity to liquidity. So yes, we have the bearish confluences. We have a daily SSMT. So basically, ES took out previous sessions high, which is um, London session. London sessions high. And we have a micro SMT. So it took out the previous mi micro cycle high while other pair, I think YM or ES did not do it. And we are inside a macro, so high probable. And we have the SMT fill off this SMT fill would have entered right here somewhere. Stop at this high and take profits at low hanging fruit right here. Nice 2.3R, but I missed it. Also, most importantly, it's above a true day open and above true session open, which is where you want to be looking for shorts right here. Okay. But I missed it. So what happens? I miss it. I f I I want to FOMO into next trade because I missed the move. Right here's where the week started going downhill. So here, okay, what do we end up doing? We we are going down from here. If people catch this trade, really good. This is a really nice A plus setup. I'm gonna put this in in my in my playbooks. But then we end up tapping an hour one for a gap. Okay, nice. What else do we have? A uh, micro SMT, a bullish micro SMT. So I start just to take a, a small long right here with a really low size because I expect after this big drop off, like how many points is this? It's crazy, right? It's like well, not too much. I mean, yeah, it is 700 ticks, uh, 176 points. So it's a lot. So I expect the market moves from liquidity to liquidity, it moves from premium to discount, whatever. So I expect this range to get filled again for like at least 0.5% um, to the to the to this area, right? The OTE level, like ICT says. It. So I expect this, it exactly happened. Um, I took along on this micro SMT. So basically the setup is, we tap an hour on for valley gap. We have a micro SMT. We, sh we show that, okay, we wanna go higher. We wanna go back to discount. So this is kind of like a, um, uh, sorry, I want to go back to premium right here. So this is kind of like a an, um, counter trend trade. I just expect price to go to premium after these confluences. So nice. But what happened is then I saw a, an opposing um, micro SMT. So I took a stupid short right here off the displacement. And, and this one got stopped out of break even. So I saw this one. Took a short right here. Really stupid. Why? Well, first of all, I'm just reflecting, right? It's all in hindsight, I know, but like I'm just showing my mistakes and, and what I think why I was doing it wrong. So first of all, why is it not, not a good short? We are not in, in premium of the range. We should be looking for SMTs higher. And after this displacement I entered, we immediately had a bullish micro SMT again. So again, opposing this bullish one again, it removes this one, right? It's opposing. So now this is a stupid trade. I should have cut it out right here, but now I just wanted to Go to my stop loss, really stupid trades. Don't ask me why I took it. Just because I thought we were ready to go lower. But no, we weren't. So then again, I thought this was another sweep. I was still thinking that this is going to work out for some reason. So I saw this as a stop rate and then another displacement. But yeah, again, this ended up being a turtle soup. 
we used to be trade again but now we are finally in premium of this range okay nice what do i want to look for now bearish cracks right and uh, we have that because we have a 50 minute fair value gap here in premium on nq we also have it on on, on es but it's an SMT fill. So what does this mean is that it filled it right here, as you can see on NQ, but did not fill it on ES. So here is where I start to see, to to do, to to look for shorts, right? So we ha I, I see this as like a, a market maker or sell model um, uh, on the low time frame, which exactly um, played out. So I entered right here, really nice entry, just after seeing this SMT fill, some some momentum lower so I, I took a short stop at this no smt here but the smt fill is enough for me inside premium um and we have clean dry liquidity right here i'm just gonna delete all of this crap i'm getting headache from this but yeah nice dry liquidity this is gonna be the low hanging fruit objective right here nice um so i was up how much is this 3.4 r did not take profits I saw the SMT, the daily SMT. ES took it out right here. Previous um, sessions um, low because this is PM. This is where PM starts. This is still New York session, um, and I did not take profits. End up holding it all the way back to my stop loss. Don't ask me why. I still thought that NQ was going to take out the low, but yeah, really stupid. I should s know that if we have a daily SMT here setup and now we have a daily opposing that deletes this one right so i should be taking profits right here it's in a one hour for value gap as well so yeah really stupid i should have been taking profits here off of the smt stupid trade also the the entry here um could have been also lower uh, because there's another smt fill right here as you can see this one minute for value gap never got filled but on es it did so after it filled on es you could have maybe taken a trade like this right so yeah just saying that also all of this happened um inside of the 11:45 to 12:50 macro like the the smart money reversal which is right here if it, uh, if some just something happens inside a macro you just deem it as more high probable more probable right so yeah okay stupid did not take profits daily smt then we have a micro smt so here you could have been taking longs just below the true session open of the pm session this could have been a trade. Yeah, man, man, so so beautiful price section, uh, but I'm just doing stupid stuff. So, okay, that is Tuesday. I did not trust my system. I took shorts too early. I was too greedy, and I was just not focused. Then we're going to Wednesday. Finally, I can have a nice moment in this video. Uh, I had a good day on Wednesday. So let's go <laughs> to Wednesday, even though it at the end is just, I lost it again the next day. But let's go to Wednesday. Really nice trading day. But some really stupid mistakes again. So here on Wednesday, okay, we are basically just always longing f since monday longs were always the best thing right so again on wednesday longs were the move but why let's go to the five minute time frame no let's just go again to the one minute first of all we have a one hour psp that i see right here so an up close candle that's forming the swing low on nq and then down close candle is forming the swing swing low on ES on the one hour time frame, right? So that's a bullish crack. That's the first thing I see. Basically, how I do my analysis, I just look for the cracks, the side of cracks that have the most amount of context, a and I just see which side has, has has better context, and I trade long or short depending on that, right? So I look for SMTs, I look for um, precision swing points, I look for SMT fill, I look for structure, market make models, the draw liquidity, really important structure raw price action all of that stuff true opens and i form my, my 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 bias based on what the most amount of context is and what looks the cleanest right so here i have a one hour precision swing point what do we have here going into market open right here 9 30. okay 
we have a one hour SMT fill right here. When this hits, this one hour fair value gap, it did not hit it on ES. Yeah, so that's an SMT fill, another crack, right? We have the one hour precision swing point. We have price stepping an hour one gap inside of discount um, while forming 90 minute SMT. So um, NQ took out previous 90, um, 90 minute cycles um, quarter low while on ES it did not. Um, and basically this one leads than this one. Um, before market open, you could have taken this trade. So 90 minute and micro, this market open, that's your short above the true session, above the true day open. So that's nice, but not really in line of trend, but it could have been a trade. But after you see then this 90 minute, then this would would be um, erased. And now you focus on longs. So we have the one hour precision swing point. We have the 90 minute SSMT. We have a price filling a gap. And also how it fills the gap is crazy. Like you can't tell this is not an algorithm literally fill the gap to the tick and also on the yes later on you will see it um so 90 minute smt nice um we are below true day open true session open you want to be looking for longs then here um and so yeah i took a long right here the journal liquidity looks clean although i am going to look for higher targets of course this is a bad risk to award but um this e external um high looks really really clean with these relative equal highs also here um, so I took a long, but I got stopped out at break even, I think, right here. Again, here, if I sh just should have taken profits after this SMT, which is like 3R, I could have just took this. But no, I, I wanted to price to go here. So I was, again, greedy, not taking profits when the price um, is already far in, 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 in my trade. So that's, again, on me break even but then on um like not, not no money lost no problem but um on yes it looked really really clean so on the yes when when nq was dropping like this yes actually went all the way towards this low again so it swept this low so we formed another smt right here still i had this drawing in mind this was this looks really really clean right so on the yes if you take a look two, two, two course putting on Wednesday so we had the daily bullish um, SMT from from yesterday remember this you can still take it with you in the in the in the current day so we have daily bullish SMT which is the biggest crack the daily bullish SMT then we had the, the 90 minute SMT here okay then here NQ did not go and sweep this low but yes did so we have an SMT here where we basically sweep this lowers liquidity inside at the one hour gap now yes filled the gap and also to the tick. So look at this beautiful price action. Now we have a, a nice setup. We sweep liquidity inside discount of this whole range. Inside a one hour gap, we fill it to the tick. After the sweep of this low, look at the next candle, really, really bullish, showing that this is li most likely a turtle soup. This happens also just below the truly open, true session open, where you want to be looking for longs. And I was just too confident that we're going to the high. So this was my best trade of the week, my only winning trade of the week. But yeah, it is a really good trade nonetheless. Um, and you could have had a re-entry. I really like to play these ones. I, I, I knew this was gonna happen. We swept an internal low, um, and then we 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 have that last push, right? I really love these entries, these turtle swoop entries, especially if there's SMT here um, as well. But here did not happen but it looks really really clean right we we go up of course market moves to discount always it just doesn't go up forever so we need to slow down a bit go back to discount turtle soup bam re-entry but i took this uh, lower entry already because this looks just really really clean um so yeah that was on um wednesday really nice day um but then yeah thursday friday were the worst I need to go over them. I need to go over them. Just have to. By the way, I'm gonna k not delete these because I wanna put these in my playbooks after I record this video. So let's just leave them. Um, but then we go to Thursday, 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 Thursday. Again here. For Thursday, I wanna go back to the economic calendar. As you can see here, 
we had no news on Monday and Tuesday, so these were bad days. Um, I can trade on these days, but maybe just low risk. So yeah, if I just didn't trade on these days, um, would have been less in drawdown. I should focus on trading on news days. But yeah, first news day, you can see here Wednesday took a win. Uh, and then Thursday, what do you see on Thursday? Thursday has the most amount of news events. So I learned from day and just general that these these days with the most amount of news, of course, most liquidity is going to get injected into the market. So that means that the there will be a nice move on Thursday. And Thursday is also Q4 of the week. So we have Monday Q1, Tuesday Q2, Wednesday Q3 and, and Thursday Q4. And usually Q4, according to quarterly theory, is the most explosive and it's, and it's a reversal quarter. And that's exactly what happened here. Because we have the most, like if, if there was no news, should not expect a crazy move. But there is news and it's Q4, it's Thursday. We have a lot of liquidity injection. So what happened on Thursday? Literally just formed the high of the week, the biggest move and th it's a reversal day, right? Like they also expected. But I did not check for um, intermarket SSMT. So I look for SMT between the S and Q, but also between the Forex market and the and the index market. And so we had a lot of cracks on the between the industry market um, and the Forex market. We had daily um, SSMT, weekly uh, SMT, a normal SSMT. But I did not see these. And I was just focusing on this 90 minute SMT. Literally no reason. Price looked really, really bearish. As you can see here, previous day's high. Let's zoom out on the 50 minute. Look at how bearish this looks. We are inside of a four hour gap, whatever, for valley gap or a volume gap or a new week opening gap. Everything is just a gap. It's my only PD ray I really use. I don't use order blocks. I think they're use useless, but Anyways, we are tapping inside this uh, hour for gap. We sweep previous day high. We have um, intermarket SSMT. So basically, um, Euro, it did sweep previous sessions high, while here on NQ or YM, it did not. So that's an, a crack, a bearish crack. And we have a one hour precision swing point, right? So maybe just for one time, I'm going to show you how this looks like. So. Da, da, da. Why is this micro SMT? This should be, uh, sorry, why is this micro NQ? It should be the normal NQ. As you can see here, this high is a down close candle on NQ, right? On Thursday, it's an up close candle on ES. So that's a one hour precision swing point. But also on the minute 15 time frame, it's within that one hour precision swing point there is a minute 15 precision swing point, right? You can see here, down close candle on NQ, up close candle on ES. So, okay, we have the intermarket sequential SMT. We are inside of this gap. We sweep previous day high. We are above a true open. We are above a true day open. What has the most kind of context? This stupid 90 minute SMT or this side? Obviously, this should not be to any relevance and we should trust the bearish cracks, the bearish context. Right. Also here, a reminder, it's Thursday Q4, which is a reversal day. Most likely if we have news, which we have most amount of red follow news there. So yeah, again, here should have taken shorts, but no, I took some stupid longs. I was too lazy to even check for the Forex market. So yeah, bad habits, bad trading should have stayed away for the market. Also like the drown liquidity, of course, most important thing. Look at all these clean, clean lows. Even if we have such bullish order flow for whole, the whole week, look at this, the whole week we have bullish order flow. All of these bearish cracks should have been assigned for shorts, right? So yeah, that was Thursday. Should not have been taking this long after a 90 minute SMT. Where should have been the trade? right here okay we have this minute 51 hour PSP we have this placement down it's 953 the macro of 945 to 1015 begins what do we have here right now above a true session open this is the strongest entry model in my opinion we have a turtle soup sweeping this low but it's also an SMT yes it did not sweep this high so after this I think then after we displace through this um, 
bullish for value gap you can take a trade here if you're not really confident otherwise just offer the soup directly um like this like this anyways the point is you should have taken shorts here i should have taken shorts here um but yeah just did not do a good analysis also a big um lesson for me is i should start my analysis at three uh my time so it's like 9 um, a.m est so i'm really really ready and i had days i think on thursday that's why I w it was my worst day i was literally just going at the charts at 9 35 when i didn't prefer anything i was just chasing price not following my system because i had not had no time to do a good analysis because the the market was already moving like crazy i wanted to, to get in so yeah don't do that never do that big mistake from me as well so yeah um and then here i wanted to take a long just because we have smt a sweep we have a daily smt but yeah all of these higher uh, cracks here weekly and all of these cracks were way stronger and i should not have um followed this um just ended up being a beautiful market maker cell model so yeah what the fuck so yeah um really bad trades and now you think like okay bobby it can be worse than this right <laughs> i'm to tell you it can definitely be worse than this because let's go to friday crazy friday what do we have for context right now okay we have thursday forming the high of the week right here right what do you expect friday to be well most likely continuation right we need to retrace a bit to this to premium to then go lower which is exactly what what happened um so so really nice this is monday so it's this is friday friday is from here to here again a really choppy day but at the end it makes sense right we have this big drop off on thursday and on friday we basically just go fill some imbalances some gaps in premium before we we go lower because thursday you should see it as like a the, tr the trendsetter of the week most amount of news events it's thursday q4 it did the move of the week the the, the the biggest move of the week so we should expect friday to just continue the trend down right so yeah let's go to what actually happened why i took some stupid trades here as well um so first of all we go to the market open market opened right here we tap a minute 15 fair value gap we have um a minute 15 precision swing point right here just because of this and a micro smt i took a short but why should i not have taken short because after this bearish micro smt we have a bullish again and i didn't see this so no really setup here the setup on the, on the long looked way cleaner right because again we go back to discount of this range we tap a minute 15 fair value gap we have a micro smt we have news right here and, and usually like we, we also tap like the true session open below true session open and usually when we have these cracks these bullish cracks just be before 10 a.m news then 10 a.m news will just push price to wherever the cracks um um show that price is going to so we have this micro smt just before 10 a.m news and 10 a.m news yeah it was just bomb right so this has no relevance because this side this bullish context is, is way better right this is not a stop right it's just man manipulation to people who want to short but it was obviously bullish order flow now looking back at it because we have a minute 15 preferably gap we have a bullish smt we tap two times below tristian open 10 a.m starts here bomb right uh, well, I took a short here because of some two stupid stuff. I don't know why I'm even. Yeah, I thought at the time that this was stronger for shorts because I did not see all of this. Again, I should just be way more focused. I'm I'm not focused because I've I had bad habits last week. And then yeah, um, we end up like my narrative for the day is we're gonna fill one hour for value gap in premium before going lower, and exactly that happened. And I just took an early short just because we filled the one hour for value gap and we had the weekly smt this is really nice so we had a weekly smt once we filled this one hour for value gap so i think um ym it took out previous day's high that's a weekly um smt 
But yeah, I just took a short way too early. If we have a big SMT like this, I need to wait for another SMT. Uh, like for example, this, I don't think this was an SMT, but there was no trade because I need to have something on the lower time frame for my entry. And so that's why this was a bad trade. End up being um, a, a bearish order flow shift, but like there is no entry for me. So I should not have taken this. After we drop off, then I know, okay, now we are starting to, to go back towards um, this low on the higher time frame right so i need to have some kind of displacement already if i don't have an entry and then now after this displacement i can look for shorts inside of this lower time frame lag right so okay i wanted to price seeing dropping from here price dropped now what i'm looking for i'm looking for a lower time frame market maker sell model right so i look for price again retracing back to premium which happened right here and then an, an um um a, a, a bearish um an, an entry for for a short right for some reason i took a long here because i saw i think this like this there's no reason i don't know why i took this but i saw this turtle soup there's literally no reason why i should have taken a short here my whole bias was bearish i was looking for a market mix well but I don't know, if you're not focused, you're just gonna take strikes that are not um, according to your system. You're just gonna chase price. You see this bullish candle and you want to go long. This is a really big mental thing. Like trading, it just fucks with your mental like crazy. If you see a bullish candle, you want a long. If you see a bearish candle, you want a short, right? That's what you do when you are not a good trader. And so I was not following good habits and I was just having bad days, not not um doing what i should supposed to be doing and then that happens right if i was focused i should never see a bullish candle as, as a long opportunity right I, I know this sounds so stupid but like i hope that someone ever experienced this but yeah obviously the draw was bearish this was my whole plan now i recognize it like why the fuck would i long here um we have a displacement down this was a really nice short but again what happened here same story I wanted to be so greedy because I knew this was going to be the next target. Somewhere right here, market maker sell model. But I should not expect price to go all the way here. If if I take a trade and take profit here, it's already 2.46R. Like take profits here, take profits. You see the price eventually here on Monday went towards this, but like it can easily just um go back into premium before going down like it still is on the higher time frame a market maker sell model right this is still your 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 framework and you can't predict that price is going straight towards here or it's gonna retrace a little bit inside premium of this down leg right which happened so you can't predict it so you should always take profits at low hanging fruit right and also most importantly we had a a daily SMT after this sweep of this low. So we sweep this, swept this low. Daily SMT, I should be taking profits right here. This was my trade. But no, I did not. Again, greedy. I just literally held it all the way back to my stop loss. I was going on a family dinner and I was literally just um, hoping for it to reverse again. Really, really bad. If you close your charge, you should also close your trades. Trading is a business. You should not be looking at your trade when, when going um, to do something fun. Um, only if you already took profits and you're just holding a runner, right? That That's the only case where you can do that. But I was literally just not even scaled out uh, anything. I didn't take any partials. So after this stop rate, after this daily SMT, I know the draw is eventually going to be lower. That's my bias, which eventually happened. But I can't predict that price going there right now. You should be taking profits at the next low if this is your setup, right? This is actually your internal market maker sell model. And this is your external, right? If I'm taking this trade, sorry. If I'm taking this trade, I should be taking profits right here. If I'm in in this trade, I should be taking profits right here, right? You see, that's uh, this is the fracta fractalability, something like that. F uh, you know what I mean? The, 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 the fractal aspect of price action, right? Um, you should be taking profits at the low of your model. So after I see this, 
bearish minute one for value gap getting displaced to this should have been a sign to take profits after all this sweep and bullish smt below the 3-day open um so yeah man this was a tough one but uh I'm, I'm glad we got here so yeah that was my week um it was really really bad of course but um yeah i'm happy i did a really good reflection so i'm just gonna be taking trades on my finance with 100 200 risk um and yeah literally just focus on risk management only taking dumb clear setups trusting your system accepting losses that's it that's literally it so yeah i'm back it's grind season winter is coming no it's first autumn yeah but these next three months are gonna be crazy i'm gonna trade every day journal just trying to get better i don't care again how how long it takes me i always say this i know um but um i just love the journey man it, the the most beautiful thing from the last few months is that i finally have a system that works and i'm so grateful for that because i don't need to fix anything in my strategy anymore i still learn from day and from from some from courses but like i'm not learning things um, with the intention to apply to my strategy and, and transform my strategy i'm just learning things from because it, it generally interests me and my strategy and my, my framework it's straight it stays the same because it works and I, I see it works because it works over and over again it's just now me that i need to fix it's it's just me it's a battle against me and it's it's really really hard but it's like m most people know trading is the hardest but also easiest way to make money um and it's a beautiful journey man and something that i learned this week where i would like to end this video with this reflection is you gotta be a person with an internal locus of control and before you say what the fuck does this mean well basically uh, an internal i mean just a locus of control is the degree to which people believe that they as opposed to external forces have control over the outcome of events in their life I'm, I'm pretty sure that an internal locus of control means that you as a person uh, have control you think that you have control over the outcome of events in their life so let's say um you're getting stuck in traffic um and the the first thing that you say is like ah um why is this this guy um just taking it so slowly in in, in the car before me you need to switch that to how could i have avoided this right if you are that kind of person who thinks that um you as a person and not the external forces have control of the outcome of events in their lives then you're just a, a better person you're gonna be more successful and 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 that's a really good trait that you should have and it, and it applies to trading as well because i know that this is my fault it's me i need to fix things on my end it's not the market I have my strategy is just that I need to fix my mental state. I need to fix my habits. I need to fix um, how, I, how I take profits, all that stuff that I talked about. If I fix myself now, then I'm at the next level of my trading. And so this is actually the hardest part. Believe me, like <laughs> trading is not hard. It's just, I mean, technical analysis is not hard. Once you really dig deep, it should only take like one or two years, two years, which is not a lot if, if, if you see the leverage, what trading can bring. The next part is fixing you and that's now where i am and i'm really struggling with it but i'm just trusting the process i i'm having an internal locus of control so i i know that everything that's going wrong in my life is due to me and not due to external factors so yeah that being said um let's keep being at it no like <laughs> there's no way i can quit training like i love this it's it's amazing just yeah you need to fix yourself man so that being said let's lock in i have trust that this will all end well because i trust the process and i keep reflecting that's the most important thing if there's no reflection there's no improvement this is the best thing what i can potentially do after a bad trading week um but yeah i hope that you learned something from my mistakes and I hope that you like the journey because I think many people resonate with this. It's hard, but we should keep being at it. Stay focused. And until next week, because we're not giving up.
Peace out.